Hi guys, today I wanna to show you how to use Jitsi on an Azure VM. Now Jitsi is a Zoom-like app that allows you to set up your own video conferencing on Azure. Now there's a lot of reasons you might wanna do this. One of the main reasons uh, you might wanna do this is security. It wasn't unheard of during the opening days of the pandemic for Zoom to have security issues. It wasn't unheard of for somebody to get uninvited access to an online meeting. You might have a group of children with a teacher and they're having an online class, but a random person just gets onto that meeting and is able to get information not only about the children and the teacher, but also gain information about their schedules and other things like that. And that created a lot of privacy concerns around the individuals and their parents and the administrators of whatever school was using Zoom at the time. Now, Zoom tried to remedy this issue, but it basically soured the opinion of Zoom during the opening days of the pandemic. Now, that is one of the security concerns. There are certainly others, but another reason you might wanna do this is for privacy concerns. Now, privacy concerns are separate for some security concerns because privacy uh, can still have an issue even if the app itself is secure. So privacy might be with something like Facebook or Google where you have these large companies that are mining data from the conversations that you're having on their platform. So if you're using something like Facebook to have a conversation with a friend and you talk about things on that conversation, Facebook can use a transcription to get information about your likes and dislikes and use that to display ads to you. And Google could do the same thing during the search results if you were using something like Google Meets. So these are different platforms that might be using the conversations to do data mining techniques for you as an individual, and that creates privacy concerns. So if you were to set up something like Jitsi on an Azure VM, not only is it secure, it's also gonna be private. It's secure because you control the access to that virtual machine and none of the information on that virtual machine leaves it and all the encryption is brokered by that virtual machine on Azure. Not even Microsoft can get access to the conversations that you might have. It's also gonna alleviate a lot of the privacy concerns because again, it's a private server, so you don't have to worry about prying eyes in the conversation unless somebody is invited to the conversation and those people would have privy information about what happened in that conversation, but it's not gonna be leaked out beyond that conversation on the general internet. So security and privacy are two reasons that you might wanna do this, but it doesn't mean that you have to do it. I just like to do this sometimes for the peace of mind, knowing that I have a secure and private conversation in the context of my uh, different online meetings that I might have. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up on Azure, and then I'm gonna show you how to connect to it using a browser and then also using a mobile app because it will work with uh, basically any platform, be it a PC or a Mac using a browser or a phone like Android or iOS using an app. So here's the GitHub repository for this particular project. And I'll link this in the video description down below so you can check this out. But this is a pretty straightforward uh, repository. There's basically three files. I might add more if I uh, decide to add more to this, but it's pretty straightforward. You basically have an ARM template, a readme, and the install script. So the ARM template just deploys the Azure resources. And once that's deployed, it actually uses a shell extension to call this particular script right here. So if you have a VM that you set up by yourself manually, you can actually run this script without having to run it from the ARM template. It's pretty straightforward. You just download the script from this repository just as the raw file. And then you can run it using bash. So you just call bash install and then you pass in the parameters. These are the same parameters that you put into the form. So these are the four parameters. I'll explain what those do in just a minute. But once you deploy those, then you will have this installed. But the easiest way to do it on Azure is simply to click this button right here, deploy to Azure. And that's going to run the ARM template, which will then in turn call the install script on the VM. So I'm gonna click this right here. And this is gonna take me to the Azure portal. If you haven't logged in, you'll have to log in, but if otherwise, it'll take you right to a custom deployment, and then you can just deploy this straight to Azure using this. So I'm gonna call this particular install, let's call it Jitsi123, and that's the resource group. You can pick a region uh, near you for best results, but any of these will work for me. Um, for the admin, this is the user that you're going to be logging onto not only the VM, but also into the uh, portal. Whenever you create the chat rooms, you'll need these credentials to create the chat rooms so that you can 
have these meetings available. Now, you don't have to have the credentials to join the meeting. You just have to have the credentials to create the meeting. So once you have those set up, you can then uh, put in an email address for Let's Encrypt. So the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate that it's going to install will not only encrypt the website, but it also encrypts the meetings too. So the secure connection between your device and the server is brokered by that SSL certificate. So whether you're using the app on the phone or using a browser, uh, you'll need an email address so that Let's Encrypt will register itself with this particular server using whatever name you put in. And the name is just basically a endpoint that you would use for connecting to this via, by way of the browser or the app. So this one is going to be jitsi 123 eastus.cloudapp.azure.com and the SSL certificate will be bound to that domain as well. So if you wanted to use a custom domain, of course you would have to modify my script or install this more manually, but this is going to use the supplied DNS from Azure as the endpoint. So once you have that done, you just click create and it will uh, do a validation on that. And then you can click create here and that will start the process of creating the VM and then installing Jitsi on that VM. So this process takes about five to 10 minutes. And once that's done, we'll come back and then we'll log on to it using a browser. So the resources are deployed. So I'm gonna go over to the resource group here and you can see that I deployed a bunch of stuff related to VMs. I'm mostly concerned about this virtual machine right here. And so I'm gonna click on this and then there's the DNS name. So I'm gonna copy that It's Jitsi123, eastus.cloudout.azure.com. And then I'm gonna open up a new browser and do HTTPS into that guy. And then that's going to take me to the Jitsi homepage. Now, this is the, the homepage that everybody would see if they had that URL. They can't really do much with it uh, other than just type in something here. You could, anybody can type in the name of a room. However, that doesn't mean they will have the ability to create the room. So if I create a room here, it's not gonna show up on the page here or anything like that, but this is where I'd wanna create a meeting URL for my particular needs. So if I took Blaze's secret meeting or something like that, um, that's going to create a room called Blaze's secret meeting. And then when I click here, it's going to ask me, do I want to use my microphone and camera? I'm going to click allow. And that's so that it can use my microphone and camera. And then it's going to say I'm the host. And then it's going to ask me to put in the credentials. And this is where I'm going to type in that username and password I supplied when I created this. And so once I click log in, then it's going to take me over to the meeting and then I will I should be able to uh, see myself on the meeting. But I'm going to pause the video for a second so I can disconnect my camera uh, and then uh, it will show allow me to use my camera in the app instead. OK, I have disconnected my camera so that uh, this should be able to use it now. So if I click log in, it's going to connect and it's going to create this session here and this will then uh, start the meeting. Um, now, if I turn on the camera, you, it should show me the available cameras that I have here. And uh, if I, and then uh, it just heard it click my camera on and it should show up here. So there I am um, recording now. And so I'm a part of this meeting. So uh, now that I'm logged into this meeting with my camera and I'm able to talk to the camera and so on with uh, Jitsi running, I can now connect my phone to the camera. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do that uh, using my phone and then I'm gonna connect my phone to the same meeting so you can see both my, me connected using the browser and my phone. To install it, open a Play Store and just search for Jitsi. And uh, once you see Jitsi Meet, tap on that and then install the app. And then the app will take a second to install, just open it up and you would copy the URL from the meeting you created and you would paste that in to where enter the room name is. And so it's the full do fully qualified domain name with slash the room, and then you click join. And then you might have to put in some permissions if it's the first time you're running it. And then put in your name, and I put in Blaze phone, and then hit join meeting. And now it's joining the meeting. And you should see my camera from my laptop, there it is. Okay, now my phone is connected. You can see that I'm gonna put it into the tile view here so you can see that I have both my computer right here on the left and then my phone on the right. You can see I'm holding my phone right here and that's what's recording myself. Um, so you can see that both of these are 
connected to this meeting, I'm having an intelligent conversation with myself. In any case, you can definitely see that the quality is pretty decent for uh, a meeting. So this would definitely work for a lot of different kinds of applications. And this is a pretty modest VM on Azure. I think it's a one BS, which would be about 10 to $15 a month to run on Azure if you wanted to run private meetings. And this will handle dozens of users. So you want to use it for like one or two rooms. If you wanted more rooms, you could scale the VM up and that would handle dozens of rooms simultaneously with potentially hundreds of users. It doesn't take a big uh, VM to have hundreds of users connected. So it's mostly a bandwidth issue. And so all you need to do is just have that beefier VM if you're going to have a lot more simultaneous users and a lot more simultaneous meetings happening at the same time. But in any case, it works great for what I'm using it for. And if you only use it occasionally, you can deallocate the VM and only pay for the storage of the disk while you're not having meetings. But in any case, it works pretty good and I'm pleased with the quality of it. I have a secure and private meeting going on right here. And you could do the same by simply installing Ditsy on Azure and setting up your own meeting server and meeting with your clients or meeting with your friends and family without prying eyes from things like Facebook or Google. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.